Hi, welcome to Webpixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor of Webpixel. Um, and we'd like to thank Aquatica for sponsoring this episode. Aquatica do a wide range of housing, sports, um, arms, and accessories. Um, and you can check them all out at aquatica.ca. They're Canadian, so that's aquatica.ca. Um, those of you that follow what we get up to on Webpixel will probably may be aware that we've just returned from a two week trip in, in Egypt's Red Sea. Um, very beautiful, typical wide angle scenery, typical Red Sea wide angle scenery. So, so big scenics, um, full of, full of life, full of fish. Um, it was a great trip. We managed to really get to, to, to tailor the itinerary to get the best out of it from an Indian perspective. Um, so anyway, um, one of the um, things I was able to do during the trip was um, to test the new Retra Pro X strobe. Now, Retra um, kindly supplied these um, for me to use, um, much appreciated, um, and the, um, they loaned them to me. Um, and they are very keen to emphasize that actually this is not a strobe, it's a flash. And I, they're absolutely right. It is a flash. Um, strobe is something different. But in underwater terminology, we tend to refer to the flashes we use underwater strobes. And, and I'm afraid I'm gonna, probably going to use the term interchangeably because my head still thinks this is a strobe, even though they are correct, it's a flash. But anyway. Um, so I was able to use this on, I think I did round about 45, 50 dives, something like that, over two weeks. So pretty reasonable test. And also using it in, you know, the conditions that really challenge some of the things with strobes. So, so you know, clear blue water, lots of fish, shooting big, wide coral reef scenics, which, which is always a place where strobes, it's a challenge for strobes. They've got to work pretty hard. And we should probably start at the top, really, and talk about power. Um, so shooting wide angle scenics, particularly with full frame camera, shooting with a Nikon D850 um, and using a combination of fisheye, um, so an 8 to 15, up to 15 mil N, uh, or the Nauticam WACP, um, which again is pretty wide, or the EMWL, the, the extended macro wide lens. Um, so all pretty much big wide angle tools and they require, by definition, lots of power to light up the subject. Um, and I'm pleased to report that I think the Retro Pro X has enough power. Um, I don't think there's a problem with it. Um, I think the power is, is sufficient. Um, I'm used to shooting these types of scenes with much bigger strobes. Um, and I think the, 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 the Pro X certainly um, came up with the goods in terms of power output. Um, I didn't find that I was needing to reach for, turn it up to 11 um, very often um, and, and so so you know I think I think that th there's an acceptable amount of power specifically I didn't do back-to-back -back testing so I can't tell you how it's powered in relationship to other brands of strobes but I think it's fair to say that it's powerful enough and I, and I, I can't really anticipate many scenarios where the strobe output of these strobes is going to be insufficient to light up um, a, a wide angle scene so so first of all power yep yeah, sufficient plenty um the second thing really and I, to me is a much much more important criteria is the quality of light that it puts out so um photography is all about light um and ultimately um you know we our images are about the way we use light and the light that's available to us underwater and Basically, because the majority of our, our underwater images are going to be lit with some form of artificial light, be that continuous or, or, or flash strobe light, um, therefore it makes sense, obviously, that um, the, the better the quality of light, the more pleasing our images will be. And um, one of the things that Retro have done with the strobe, and you can see it here, is they've used a circular flash tube. So what's the advantage of a circular flash tube well again it's not set in stone and there are the workarounds but generally all strobes are going to put out an output of light that's cone shaped so it's going from the strobe pushing out towards the subject in the shape of a cone now obviously if you use a tube that is round by definition you're already evenly spreading the light throughout that cone um, when you use other shaped flash tube, and the most common ones are to use straight flash tubes, you then need to use diffusers or um, other tools to basically create a round spread of light. And you know, obviously, it can be done very effectively. But in general, um, you know, it's it's going to be um, something that needs to produce. So the first thing is this produces a really nice even beam of light throughout 
the entire output of the strobe. And I think this is something that really makes for very, wraps that light around the subject. Um, it creates a really soft, even beam. There isn't any obvious lighting going on. And I think this is a really, really important part of, of what the strobe does. So the, the circuit flash tube and the quality of light, I think is really, really good. Um, I, I'm, I'm a huge believer that, you know, we should invest as much time in our decisions in terms of the lighting as we should in terms of our cameras and lens combinations. Because ultimately, you know, with poor lighting, it doesn't matter how good your camera is, how good your lens is, it, your images are still not going to achieve their full potential. So um, I'm pleased to report that certainly the um, light um, output by these strobes is, is excellent. However, <laughs> there's no such thing in life as a free lunch. I'm not sure. And the problem with round flash tubes is that they're relatively power hungry. And this is obviously combined in this, this case, the strobe is very powerful too, potentially. So shooting wide angle scenics, you're typically got these strobes turned up pretty high. Um, you need to, to get the light out because you can't get as close as you want and um, because you're trying to shoot a very wide scene. And that means that the, the power requirements for a strobe like this are very high. Now this, the, 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 the 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 Pro X is powered by four AA batteries, and um, obviously you can use um, any loops, which is what most people do. Um, and they simply go in a battery compartment at the back, slot in there um, for any loops. I mean, of course, the, the advantage here, you know, AA batteries are available everywhere. So you know, if you're somewhere very remote and there was an issue with batteries, you could just simply revert to using pen lights. But what it does mean, because you've got this very powerful um, round flash tube, I find that in general, four double A's is probably going to mean that you find it quite hard to keep up with um, with your battery power. Now, Retro have um, provided a tool that can help with that, and this is called a supercharger. This takes a further four double A's and screws onto the back of, back of the battery compartment like so. It's important not to over-grease these O-rings. And there have been problems with them over-greasing. In fact, it's very hard to get them apart if you over-grease them. So, so gentle greasing is important. But now you've got eight double A's. And this of course means, first of all, you've got more battery capacity. Um, and secondly, it will increase the recycle time. So, so it's a, definitely a way of dealing with the fact that this is a relatively power hungry strobe. And um, the downside is, well, one of the nice things about the Retro is its form factor. You know, it's a much smaller, shorter body strobe than a lot of very powerful strobes. And that means it can fit right in around macro ports or right in around ports. Now, to be fair, this is something that typically we're doing when subjects are closer. So we may not need as much power. So we may be able to forego the supercharger. But it is something, you know, this kind of does mean that we're now back in effect being a fairly long strobe which means it doesn't fit in around in front of the handles and, and, and alongside smaller dome ports or macro ports so so i guess it would be a question of choosing to use this when you need to use it and taking it off when you don't and um, i think this is probably an, an important consideration certainly the form factor without it is great because it tucks right in but the power the, the the number of flashes you've got is limited so it's it's as always it's a compromise between these things and um, something else I think that's really, really important with this drive, and it's something that certainly I discovered, um, is that you really need to pay attention to A, the number of batteries you take, and B, um, your charging system. So um, as it happens on this trip, I did take two complete sets of batteries. So obviously that's eight batteries per strobe, so a total of 16 for both strobes, um, and then obviously double that, so I had 32 batteries with me. Um, but what I hadn't done is I had a single charger with eight slots. And to be honest, I think you really need to be able to charge one set of batteries at a time, so i.e. have charging capacity for 16 batteries. Um, and so whether that's two eight slots or what I've actually done now is I've got um, two lots of uh, sorry four lots of four slots it end up in the same place and um, but it does give you a bit more redundancy so if one fails i've still got sufficient backup but the idea being basically that you have one set of batteries in the strobes and the supercharger one set of batteries um on charge and um, i actually found that i had to get up in the middle of the night to change my change my battery charging over which wasn't a big issue but and um, certainly is one you can live without so so i think important here that if you if you plan to use these strobes particularly in places where you're going to be shooting at, at pretty high powers a lot of the time and um, 
pay careful consideration to your um, batteries and charges um, and how are you going to set up your charging system. I think it, it's an important, important um, thing to bear in mind. Um, Retro kindly supplied quite a few accessories for me to try and the first one unfortunately is one that I well, that, well unfortunately is one that I can't actually produce because it's gone back to the Red Sea and it's with Alex currently in the Red Sea and um, the standard diffuser which they did supply um, is the um, wide angle diffuser this has a reduces color temperature by minus 500 degrees K and reduces by 0.6 of a stop so two thirds of a stop basically and um, the new soft diffuser um, which has just come out relatively recently and um, reduces the um, color temperature by 200 degrees K and reduces it by a third of a stop. Um, and I think this is a really, really good combination with the strobe. And in fact, for me, um, I would say it's better than the original um, diffuser. Now I'm aware that some of the older retros really needed this in order to, to warm up the output a bit. But certainly with this strobe, it has, I think, a rate of 4,900 degrees Kelvin. So reducing 200 degrees off it, you know, 4,700 is quite acceptable and it gets lovely blue. So so I, I really think, and obviously we're only reducing the output by by one third rather than two thirds. So again, those big wide angle scenes, you can get power on the subject. I think they're a really, really good um, tool and, and actually in fact I think for me you know personally for blue water diving they would be my go-to diffuser I'm not sure that I would I would be using these um obviously like all diffusers they soften the light they also spread the light um and so you know there will be situations where you possibly wouldn't want that to happen and rent a number of tools available this one's got a clip attached to it but essentially this is a reducing ring this goes in onto the onto the bayonet system get it in the right place um and um that then obviously reduces the output um from the strobe and um, there's also further you can add macro reduction rings to further reduce the output um so there are a variety of options and um, obviously in situations like macro photography where you want to control for the light um and also actually in situations where you're dealing with less visibility not relevant to the red sea or reduced visibility where you don't want the light spraying around these are really good options to, to consider so so a good option now along with this also retro supply the reflector um, and this is quite a unique device I don't, I don't know of any other manufacturer using it and what this does it, it slots in on the reduction ring like so um, and essentially you can get a pretty good view of it what it does is it produces quite a hard edged circular beam so it's not soft at all um, and it does also intensify the beam. Now, where is this useful? Well, consider a situation where you want to increase the range of the strobe, i.e. you want to light something that's further away, but you want to light something relatively small. So you want to control the fall of the light. So a good example would be fish portraits where you've got a fish, you can't get as close as you might want. And um, the traditional approach then was to throw your strobes out the front, you know, and, 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 then, then that but of course that's also intimidating for the fish so what you might be able to do with the with the reflector is basically pull them further back you basically do want to control the fourth of light because you obviously want the star of the show the fish to be in the spotlight um, and that this is a really useful tool and um, it's not going to be one you use for every shot it would be probably one where you're going out with the intention of shooting fish portraits and you're going out and then frequently the case you know you're going to go out with a with a, a macro lens you know 105 or 60 depending on your setup or something similar and, and go out and you can shoot fish portraits and then i think this is certainly worth considering um i would say probably if i'm doing it i did shoot it with two with one on each strobe and to me that's not really what you're trying to do here that that kind of doesn't really work i think this is probably something that will work best with a single strobe and um, and you know really consider that idea of you know creating a spotlight beam onto your subject in this case obviously a fish something it could be something else it's not a snoot because you've still got the ambient light around it um, but it certainly intensifies the beam gives you a bit more reach with your strobe which is a useful thing in some situations um so um sticking for the moment with um the controls of the strobe um the retro flash pro x has a fiber optic port and um, it's supplied with an adapter which allows you to use either um l type i think it is the one or alternatively the the, the normal in on um fitting um on them 
and both can be used by the same port. Um, but what you will notice is that there is no option to use an Econos cable. So um, there is um, Retro provide an accessory that will convert your Nikonis electrical input into an optical input, which then goes into here. So an optoelectrical converter, in this case, electro optical converter, I suppose. Um, but ultimately, this is a strobe that is designed to work primarily or to be triggered by fiber optic. Now, if you're someone who really, really wants or needs to use electrical connections, I would suggest that that is a bit of a sticking point with this strobe. Um, you know, as I said, there are options you can do conversions, but in general, you know, unless there, there probably is going to, it's probably going to make life difficult. So I would suggest that, um, you know, it may not be the best option if you're absolutely dead set on using electrical connections. Um, something else to bear in mind um, is that um, it, um, it has the dials on the back here. And one of the things I tend to find with the control dial, which is this one, is that it is possible to set it in between settings. So you need to make sure, you can see that there, that it is actually in between its settings. Um, you need to make sure that when you turn it, you turn it positively to the, so you get it to click. Um, I think it, it's quite easy to inadvertently leave it between settings. And I think that's potentially a problem. So you need to make sure that as you click it, it does click positively into its setting. Um, I must confess that I didn't shoot this strobe in TTL. I don't really shoot TTL at all, very, very rarely. Um, and generally in, in, in situations where the cold has meant that my fingers don't work anymore. So, so then I shoot TTL. Um, so I haven't tested its TTL function. Um, if you're someone that uses TTL, um, I'm afraid I can't give you any feedback as to how well TTL does or doesn't work. I I'm, must I'm, be honest, I don't know. I've only ever used my manual. So, um, so um, my apologies for that. Um, so, um, just to kind of recap, um, strobe, I love the form factor on it. Um, obviously the supercharger, I think is an important accessory for big wide angle scenics, but it does affect the form factor. I think the power on them is sufficient for wide angle scenics, which is like, really probably sufficient for just about everything. Um, I think the quality of the light is exceptional and particularly in a strobe this size. You know, I think, you know, if you, you, you up until now you've had to go to a much bigger strobe to get equivalent quality of light and ultimately that's probably the most important criteria i like the fact there's a family of accessories that we can adapt to it um and um you know i think the downside is that if you're someone that's triggering a strobe electrically i think you may bump into problems with it um and last of all and i wasn't gonna <laughs> i forgot to mention this one of the other things we can do is obviously is we can actually there's an app um, that you can use, you compare it to your to a, a mobile device or a phone, um, and it allows you to control some of the strobe functions. I think very useful. And I think again, in terms of going back to this idea that we should invest in in light as much as we invest in cameras and lenses and ports and things. I think one of the interesting things is this obviously does to some extent generate some kind of future proofing. So if in the future we find that our our needs have changed or that we're using a different triggering system or whatever it may be, there may well be the opportunity then to update firmware via the app. And I think that's a really good situation. I know a couple of other manufacturers now are also offering upgrade options via firmware updates that can be done at home. I think this is definitely something that that would is on my shopping list now in terms of, of things I'm looking for in strobe um, or flash for the future because I think you know one thing's for certain is that I'm probably going to want to change in the future and having the option to be able to do firmware at home makes that much more viable. So once again many thanks to um, Retro Team Retro and Oscar specifically for allowing me to use these strobes. Um, I'm going to confess now that I've decided that I'm actually not going to send them back to him. They're mine. You can't have them back. Um, so um, we, we'll now haggle about price. Um, but um, certainly, um, you know, I think they're a really great strobe. Um, and, you know, I, I'm very, very pleased that I was able to use them for the trip. Um, so thank you all to you all for watching thanks very much to aquatica for sponsoring this episode again obviously our sponsor support is really important 
Um, and I'd like to please feel free to add comments or, or, or suggestions in the comments box below this. Obviously, ask any questions or ask them over on the WebPixel forum. Um, obviously, it's a really good place because it does allow us to keep track of conversations better. Um, and feel free to drop us a like if you enjoy it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Mm -hmm.